Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're continuing our month focusing on the kitchen. What is food alchemy? How can learning to eat intuitively support you in releasing clutter, not only in your kitchen, but also your life? Learn tips as we talk about intuitive eating today. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Looking to organize your life? Do you feel stuck and are ready for a change? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer and coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she supports you in navigating the waters of decluttering your life and getting organized. Julie thinks outside the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, and more. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Hey everyone, I'm super excited. Today we are going to talk about clutter and how it relates to eating. If you've listened to my podcast, you know I'm an emotional eater. I'm really excited. I've made strides, but I think this is such an important topic. Even if you declutter your kitchen with bad food or get rid of dishes you're not using, if there's an emotional, mental, spiritual clutter or energetic clutter going on, it's still going to affect your eating. And we all know if we eat a get a bunch of cluttered, we get heavy, we get overweight. I'm very excited to talk to today's guest. I've had the pleasure of interviewing her before. Check out my YouTube channel, Reawaken Your Brilliance. We have some interviews on being intuitive and spiritual painting, lots of good stuff. But let's tell you about today's guest. Dr. Jen Royer is an internationally known intuitive counselor, speaker, spiritual teacher, energy healer, visionary, speaker, writer, and radio ho host of The Jen Royster Show, a popular international radio show since 2010, syndicated throughout 135 countries to millions of listeners. She holds several degrees, including Doctor of Divinity, ordained spiritual minister, MS in metaphysics, and Reiki master. Dr. Jen is well known for her innovative style and intuitive reads, energy healing, spiritual crisis support and guidance, and support for empaths. Her work with empaths has gained respect with many medical doctors and psychologists who refer patients to her for spiritual counseling when clinical roots show no results. A positive move forward in showing the importance and power that energy healing brings to healthcare. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. It is great to talk to you again, Julie. It's great to be here. So excited. So let's get started. When we have what I, whether it's emotional, spiritual clutter that's going on with eating, what exactly is going on? And maybe it's different if it's emotional for energetic since you work with energy, but why do we get cluttered with our food? You know, our bodies have cells. I mean, every part of your body is a cell and it has in energy terms a consciousness it has life okay it has it feels so when we are going through emotion you said you were an emotional eater you're holding that in the cells of your body and that affects physically i mean i just saw the light bulb go on there <laughs> yeah it's just like oh that makes sense yeah it really does and the thing is with intuitive eating and when you work with your intuition i'm very much about people learning how to trust their intuition not just relying on me doing a read which i do but i'm they know that about me i make them toe the line on that like i want you to trust what you're picking up because you can actually reverse the emotional eating from being you know, dysfunctional or harming you eating too much ice cream or whatever to intuitively hearing uh, an intuitive hit where your body will need a certain supplement or vitamin or nutritional value. And it will say, you know, don't you really want a whole lot more cabbage today? Or, you know, and I know this really, it really will do that. And then for some reason, instead of it being the ice cream, it'll be what you need in a nutritional value. Or it'll tell you to stop eating something with GMO. Or I, that was a big one. And the more I got away from pesticides or you know additives in my food or preservatives, and I was eating real food, 
and we garden and grow our own organic stuff too. We even have our water with RO, reverse osmosis, getting all the fluoride out. I continue to see it improve and our health is improving. And my husband went through a big scare with, with his liver and it wasn't alcohol or anything related. He's, he barely drinks a beer, you know, and we went through a lot with him and he's more of an analytical mind. You know, he's the, the IT guy. He's really on it now. Over the last year and a half, he completely changed. He could never lose the, the belly. He could never lose the weight. And as soon as I said, and he, you know, I think because he's my husband, he would tune me out sometimes. But now he realizes, oh, my God, there's really something to this. Because the liver, for example, he was upset about something that happened a while back. And the liver holds anger. And so you detox it all out. But if you can detox things out and detox, and we're all about the detoxing, and we used to do it a couple times a year. Now we're doing something where you're maintaining it more on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You're keeping those pipes clean. Completely different. Completely different everything. I mean, everything changes. The emotions, the way you respond to them. So that's a bit of a general answer, but I wanted to give you a kind of an overview of what I was talking about. Okay, well, you've, you've popped, more questions have popped into my head. <laughs> yeah. that, so that's perfect. So I was thinking one, a couple things. Can you talk about why we crave junk food? Is it because the additives and we're addictive? And then my other question is, if, if food is holding a consciousness, if we're really angry, are we going to crave chips because the chips are angry? Is there some type of correlation with that? I don't know if that's off the wall, but. No, I, I, I hear you. And I'm going to tweak it a little bit to clarify it. The anger is more at the self because we'll crave what will hurt us because we're almost doing a self, I hate to use the word punishment, but that's what it is. We're, we're hurting the self. It's a self-love issue. And we'll get upset with ourselves. We'll berate ourselves. Uh, we are emotionally upset because we allowed someone else to hurt us or upset us. And we're attached to it. And then we're mad because we know we shouldn't be attached to it. And this goes into a cycle. Then we feel like bad you, bad you. And, and you then your emotions are, it's almost like we're telling our emotions on an energetic level, well, you need to pay for this. Uh. And, you know, I'm trying to personify all these different aspects of, the, of our bodies to help everybody follow me. Because you have the physical body, you have the emotional body, you have a mental body of your soul body. And when your physical body is the last one, your physical body just is the computer, the hardware that does what it's told. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your emotions are an energy. They are pure energy. They're part of us and not one, not one emotion is bad or the other. But when we try to stuff, we try to stuff our anger or stuff that resent. Raising my hand, folks. <laughs> We try to stuff whatever, you know, we try to suppress it because we're trying to just keep it under control. I say that's the action, you know, that's not the way you want to handle it. You want to acknowledge, mm -hmm. you want to acknowledge that you got upset about it. You're not, you're not picture perfect the way you think you should be responding. And then you need to send love to that side of you that got upset because that energy frequency is down and that's a darker side of you right now. Everybody's got that shadow or everybody has reactions and responses. And when we, and I call it sending light just to give you some sort of visual here. If you send light to that side that you don't like so much, or you're not very proud of, you're taking away the vice for the cravings. You're taking away the vice for it doing a self punishment it's very empowering and you do that within yourself it's an individual thing there's so much empowerment in that it's not like you have to go uh have somebody else help you get there mm -hmm. i think it's just understanding that there's a person in there that needs to love the most and when we're going through that it's yourself and it's never about what somebody else did never Oh, absolutely. We create our own reality. I firmly believe that. So if I'm having a craving 
I usually have a craving for chips. I'm like a nacho girl. So uh, then in the moment, I'd want to say, okay, maybe take a deep breath and sit quietly, just send light in general. If I can't figure out what it's, what, where it needs it, what would you say to someone? Okay. Um, well, first, like, you know, the, uh, the, the crunching, that's, an, that's aggressive. So you're probably suppressing overreacting to something because you feel that it's in too much. <laughs> Sorry, calling you out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. If it supports people, it's all good. Right. And that's what we're doing here because I have been like, I go for the nuts. And cause I, 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 you know, and I go, you know what? Calm the heck down. You know, I just say to myself, all right, I hear you. What's going on? I talk to that side of myself. Um, I know it sounds funny, but, and I answer too, by the way, but I talk to that side of myself like it is a child that doesn't understand yet. Mm. And it needs to grow up a little bit and it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. So no, you're not going to, completely understand it. But if you have that intention and you acknowledge it, just say, okay, yeah, I, I know I shouldn't be doing this or reacting this way. And I, it's really making me so mad. How can I detach from that and ask for that? I ask for that. I ask angels to help me with that because that they are just such positive support. And there's just something that takes away that intensity of the whole the whole drama with it. And then I realize I'm not doing anything but hurting myself by allowing someone else's opinion of me affect me or their opinion about what I should do or just that's who they are in that moment and that's them. It has nothing to do with me. The way someone else is, is has nothing to do with us, but we take it personally. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes, too. I grew up as an empathic healer. We feel everything. So I had to really learn this. Um, and then I say, okay, I'm craving chips because of whatever. And you realize it. You acknowledge it. And then I go to the next step. I go, all right. I acknowledge it. Let's do something very special and nurturing for you. And I... I go, what have you been feeling frustrated about that you really want to do? And sometimes it means a timeout from all the obligations and you just need to take care of you. It might be that I just need to go take a timeout break. I, I need to go paint or walk or go to the beach or something. Um, do something good for yourself. Sometimes just buying yourself something that you would like to have, like, a, like some flowers or a fresh new something, you know. And you don't have to spend a lot if you're on a budget. And then if you have to do it in a half step, Julie, go to the non-GMO organic session and get healthy chips. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, get a healthy chip. Because I wouldn't say that all of that is even perfect, but you're going to feel good that you did a good thing and a kind thing. Because if a child's upset about something and they're throwing a bit of a temper tantrum, you're going to try to make that child feel better. You're going to try to make that child say, you know what, let's do something different. Get the mind off of it. So my goal is to, in saying all this is change the thought pattern to something else and put your focus into something else. Uh, active meditation, like I, I've, I think I've talked to you about that before. Active meditation is just involving yourself, immersing yourself into something that takes your mind off of things. That'll clear your mind. And then it would be like, what, what craving for chips? Because you get lost in it. You're not even thinking about all that. But, you know, and ask. I ask. I say, can you help me crave something that would be helpful to my body? Because your body with certain foods that aren't so good for you actually affect emotions and affect our hormones and affect that governs all the rest of the systems. So when we're eating, um, and when we do it, when we work with intuitive eating, we're, we're teaching ourselves to open up to allowing ourselves to pay attention to craving something healthy for ourselves. So you're switching what you attract in the craving. Surrounded by clutter, tired of the stress it creates, Ready to find peace of mind and reduce your anxiety? 
Our comprehensive How to Declutter Your Life course guides you step-by-step -step in how to clear clutter and simplify your life. Each section is three months, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and features manageable to-dos. A bonus month on clearing energetic clutter is also included. Choose either workbook or video course. How to Declutter Your Life is designed to build a strong foundation for releasing clutter and continued personal growth. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. I wanted to ask really quickly, too. A lot of times people, chips, or they crave sweets or chocolate. Can you tell us what's going on when they crave that? Because I just, or salty things. I just want to hit on major things that people usually have cravings for. Because I think you've given us such awesome advice here but that it might, if we have an idea of what they are, might help people a little more. Okay. Um, well, let's see. For, uh, how about an example? Like the chips would be the aggression. Chocolate. The chocolate, chocolate is a comfort like love. So that means you're not loving yourself enough or you don't feel loved. And so I think it how I somehow got intertwined with Valentine's Day. I mean, I'm like... <laughs> I don't know. But even if, you know, I want a piece of chocolate, I always go for that really dark chocolate that's mm -hmm. supposed to be better for you. I make sure there's something organic in there. I think I have organic covered coconut. But I found that when I've worked on this, it'll go bad before I actually want any of it because I'm not craving it so much. But now if you went with something like chocolate, Chocolate actually has positives in it too. It has mm -hmm. uh, flavonoid, or that's not the right word, I think. But they, they, it has some antioxidants in it. So, if you're craving something, that doesn't mean it's best necessarily bad. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I believe it or not, for the last month, have been craving cabbage. I'm like, okay, with the cabbage already. So I asked, I said, what's with the cabbage? And they said, there's, and I constantly detox my liver because cabbage is one of the ones that'll detox your liver. And I'm like, is something going on here? And they go, there's an energy wave going on right now where everybody, and bear with me to the audience if this is a new term for you, but we, and I know that they'll relate in some way. But everybody's body and emotions and thoughts and beliefs, everybody's upgrading. And they're finding themselves in a spot where, I don't know if I agree with that anymore. I don't know if I believe that anymore. I don't know if I like this food anymore or this brand of food anymore. Listen and pay attention to that is what I'm saying. It may not seem like much, but listen and pay attention to it because that is the soul driving the ship inside because there's a soul there's a spirit to you to everybody that is that's who you want running everything because it knows the best route for you at all times it knows the best for you it knows the route to happiness um our ego our personality side will get in there and it will it'll challenge new things that are coming. And that's what a lot of people are feeling right now. They're feeling like this soul of magnetically is pulling them over here and their intuition, like with food and stuff is pulling them in a different direction from what they know. Ego kicks up and goes, well, that's not the way we've always done it. We've always had mashed potatoes with all this horrible gravy on it, you know? And, and it's like, we don't want to eat that anymore. We don't want that anymore. Or we don't want, like we switched over to, we drink coffee, but we drink organic. Mm -hmm. We but we buy organic beans. I won't drink it if it's not. And it all of a sudden, that was an intuitive hit. Stop it, stop it. Well, then I find out after the fact, after I went and did homework, that's one of the highly sprayed foods. Most That's one oh, of the highest sprayed foods that. with pesticides. That celery, God, no. Celery don't, yeah. Certain foods have more pesticides sprayed than others. And that was one of the higher sprayed foods. And I went, okay, well, there you go. See, I was listening to that. And it, did, it doesn't make rhyme or reason when it's coming in as an intuition hit. You listen to it. What I do is I listen to it 
And then I go and I research and I do my homework. I go into science mode. If I wasn't doing what I do, I would be a scientist researching something. I do believe in that because I see so much of the energy and the work that I'm talking about in science. Mm -hmm. Because it's it just is the way energy works. So now, would you be able to give us some tips? Like how do we know? Like for a while, for about two weeks, I was craving potato chips. Like it was nobody's <laughs> business. Now, how would I know if that was coming from a, a negative or less positive place? How do we mm -hmm. know to listen? How do we know to distinguish our intuitive voice? Is it how do we can you give us some suggestions with that? Because how do I know if it's ego saying potato chips or it's intuitive? Well, you know what? You really need some salt. Yes. Okay, great. That's good. Um, well, the first thing that I would say is it, it's just stop, stop. When you realize that you're doing that, like, oh gosh, why am I craving? I was doing it with cabbage. So what I did, I'll, I'll use that as an example. I just stopped. I said, okay, my body is talking to me. My spirit is talking to me. It is saying you need something that's in that food item. Go look up the vitamins that are in that food item, the nutrition that's in that food item. I mean, do some, you're doing some research now. This is the fun part because, okay, I'm craving these potato chips. Okay, what's in the potato chips? Hello. Okay, if it's the salt, are you having leg cramps? Are you showing other signs of you're not holding and retaining enough water? Ah. Okay. okay, that's an example. So you're digging in, you're using science and law. This gives the ego in the left side of the brain an activity to actually participate in a positive way versus being sabotage. Okay, so instead of going, why are we doing it this way? Okay, why don't you help me figure it out instead of arguing with me all the time? And <laughs> it, that that's what you want. So you listen to the hit, the intuitive hit, you're listening to the craving. So you're acknowledging the craving versus bashing the craving and mm -hmm. being hard on yourself. There's a reason for the craving. The craving is trying to tell you that you need something, whether it's an emotional balance, you need to get over something, you know, you mm -hmm. need to listen to it. It's craving for a reason. And also, a lot of the intuition and the soul is all about the freak. The, the let me put it this way: it's the frequency of the energy. So, the more positive is higher and healthier. Think of it that way. Lower is negative and complaining and things like that. Um, if you're having a craving, like say for those potato chips, usually potato chips are something really crunchy and like that is like a uh, blah, blah, blah. you know it's a it's kind of a frustration. It's a it's intense and you're probably not speaking outwardly about you're, you're probably holding it in. So it's energy that's trying to find a way out. That's very explosive energy, you know, and intense energy. Um, that's one example. And you listen to that and you go, okay, you acknowledge, Oh, okay. I got something I need to release. I have some energy that's trapped that I need to get out. You can do that with exercise. You can do that by taking a time out. If you're overworking yourself or you're trying to keep up with demands, just say, you know what? I need an hour to go to the gym or I need to go do, you know, the jacuzzi jet tub, whatever it takes, you know, whatever your thing is. You know, for me, I live at the water. So I have the blessing of going over and putting my feet in the salt water, except right now in February, but <laughs> we still have it and it's amazing. But, you know, we just, you just have to, um, you're, you're, it's actually not that hard. You're just deciphering it. So I would write it down. I'd say, acknowledge it, aware. You're writing that down and going, okay, yeah, I've been craving this for a couple of weeks. What's going on in my life at the same time I'm having this craving? And you'll see whether it's just a lot of physical demand, a lot of job work. Is it stress? Um, you start taking, you start to see a pattern. You start to say, did I have an argument with somebody? Did somebody upset me? Um, did I just have something happen financially? You know, you're looking at all these different things. It'll really help you. But looking for that nutrition in the food will help you see if it's something. I mean, to crave cabbage is kind of like, how exciting is that, right? <laughs> so that's how I, I knew that. that. I knew that that was something in it that it, my body needed. So I'm like, all right, come on with the cabbage. I mean, no kidding. I couldn't get enough of it. And then I was like, I need more kale. 
I would just eat a whole thing of it. And that's actually crunchy, by the way. It's a good substitute for chips. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> just I've eat made it raw chips before. Kale chips are yummy. Yeah, kale is really good for you. But I was having something I was, my body was trying, the reason that happened for me, my body was fighting, you know, just a cold. And that can, whenever you have a virus, uh, it can inflame anything else you have. And I, it was trying to inflame some joints. Uh. And the kale just alkalinizes, calms all that inflammation down. And so I noticed that after eating an entire bunch of, organic and i always get the organic guys i am one of those uh kale and i eat it raw just fresh raw i i felt great that day and i realized okay yeah this is this is my body's talking to me i need to listen we're just not listening and taking what we're picking up seriously sometimes and take it a lot more serious than um uh, taking it a lot more seriously can truly help you in your health, your happiness. It can help you balance your life because your body's just one huge antenna. And so when you start on the physical level eating better, then that's going to affect you, I would say, on mm -hmm. all levels, right? Yes, because now if you if this is all brand new to you and say you – you eat pretty toxic or you know you you don't real you didn't even know and you want to get started because some people think oh it's going to be too expensive to eat that way actually no because you're not going to be buying the other stuff but start one one step at a time start with something that you know you need to replace with something better you know one step at a time helps the mind body accept oh okay that's not so much it also helps the ego with the changes because okay, that's one little thing, all right. But if you try to change it all at once, sometimes it's just too much and it'll fight you more. But, you know, for some people, they just go dive right in and they do fine. But if that's too much, then it, do one step at a time. I mean, years ago, back in the, oh, 90s, early 90s, like 93, I used to eat red meat. I used to way back then. I could not eat it. I couldn't smell it. I couldn't, and I didn't understand. I was like, okay. I was not in an environment that would understand what I do now. Let's put it that way. And I stopped eating it. Best thing I ever did. And so different foods have done that with me. And when I realized it was starting to, it'll usually start that way. It'll start to eliminate. When you're willing to go there and accept your intuition, it will start to eliminate what needs to go away first because you got to make room for the good things to come in. So normally when you're making a big change, it's about you got to get rid of stuff so you you can bring something new in. If it's just cram packed, it doesn't make any sense. But you'll find that you just don't seem to have the same responses. You'll find that like sugar, for example, oh, Sugar's like the it, across the board, pretty much. That's pretty rough on a lot of people, and that one really affects emotions, especially for women. So, if you really have that craving for the chocolate, try to get the dark, organic, non-GMO as best you can. Get as dark as you can. It'll be bitter if you're a milk chocolate person, but it's a start. It's a start. You know, you can also have. Um, you know, different foods, you know, like just, 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 just learning how to just try one little thing at a time can help, can help with that because there are, there are positives in chocolate, but the sugar cravings are rough and they usually make you crave more of the things that are hurting you. So it's, it, it's a, it's a big deception to the body. It confuses the pancreas on the sugar levels. And so, and sometimes you're going through a detox process. It might take a day or two. You know, you're, you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can get through this. Believe it or not, uh, in most cases, not everybody, but I can't speak for everybody, but in most cases, if you were trying to get off the sugar, you'll find uh, that it's improving within a day or two. That you just got to stick it out. I just quit sugar. I quit January 1st gluten and sugar. And the first couple days were hard. But, you know, it was just after the holidays, so it's I had habit. more yeah. more sugar than usual. And then right. so for Valentine's Day, we went out to dinner. I have this great support group. I'm on this 90-day 
sugar-free cleanse. Well, first of all, sugar is in everything. You, if you're mm -hmm. going to get off sugar, you have got to read labels. But the first couple days, and then I was fine. And then when we went out uh, to dinner for Valentine's, I said, okay, I'm going to take a break. And then I'm starting this whole 30 program that I'm excited about. But so I went for broke. I had pasta. Now remember, <laughs> no gluten or no pasta <laughs> for like, or no gluten or sugar for six weeks. Had cheesecake and bread. And I hadn't had bread in forever. I was sick the Your entire night. Body and, told you. Yeah, because yeah. my body and I and I wanted to experiment. So with this whole 30 thing, I'm doing that and I'm off dairy now. And I don't drink a lot. So it's the booze and no MSG in it. And I wanted to do it because I read one the science behind it, but they also talked about how it's resetting your mind and your relationship mm -hmm. with food. Yes, it is. No, I mean, you, that was a good example because once you get away and you try something that you haven't had in a while, you know, I used to really want that all the time. And you, you're kind of, I mean, you'll go through that. Everybody does it. And I've done that. And I've had like something that I haven't had in forever. And I'm like, it's just not, you've lost that desire for it. You've lost that taste for it. And it just doesn't, You'll, and that's a good sign. That's good because it won't be so hard to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. You won't want it like that anymore because you're looking forward to other things. But um, intuitive eating, intuitive eating is listening to the positives and the negatives on the, on the intuitive hit. So the craving could be positive or negative. So if you are trying to figure that out, like I said, dig into the food itself tear it apart, see what the nutritional value is. If there isn't any like sugar, well, mm -hmm. that one's easy. Your research is done. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, yeah, that one's not a positive one. That means your frequency energetically is lower. That means we attract more emotionally, more lower frequency experiences. We'll respond in a lower frequency, which is more of a negative. So it all coincides. So, you know, when you're up and you're feeling good and you've got that food that's supporting you, it'll support the emotions as well. It'll support the mindset. And you'll also be able to decipher um, mentally, like that, you know, I used to think that was the greatest thing, but maybe not so much. And it's a lot easier to release and detach. It, it It's like you can see better. Now, I need to finish a thought. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Go ahead. I was what finished. What I wanted to know is, so do you eat intuitively all the time? I'm thinking I have a friend that is so obsessed because I think you can go to the other side that it's great. Like, it's don't want to hang out with her because she's so, everything has to be this way and, you know, we are limited to the restaurants we can eat. And on one hand, good for you, but... I don't know. I, I like eating. I want to get to the point where I'm eating healthy 95% mm -hmm. of the time. But if I want that piece of cheesecake, I'm going to have it. Right. No, you're making a great point. And honestly, my husband and I, we're really good with our, with our diets because we feel better. But I mean, we, we go out um, and we have what we want. Now, uh, for me, you know, and he, I'm a spiritual teacher and I'm going to say it right now. I love to have a glass of red wine. And some classes or some circles are like, don't have any at all. Don't have any at all. If that's what you need to do, like your friend, if, if that's what they need to do to make sure that they are where they want to be, that's fine. But you don't have to follow what somebody else thinks you should do. Mm -hmm. You That's going right back to... I don't, that's not for me. I don't have to follow the same things. So, you know, you have to listen to what's right for you and you have to speak up and you have to go, okay, but you know, we like going over here. If you go and you do it and, and you realize, yes, I am sabotaging myself or no, I enjoyed that. My husband has found that he can eat twice as much because he changed what he was eating. Mm -hmm. We actually did our Christmas and our Thanksgiving meals with coconut sugar and different. We tried all these, and I make homemade breads, but I changed up all the ingredients. And we had a great time rediscovering new traditional dishes. We were eating all kinds of stuff, but we didn't feel horrible after we ate our Thanksgiving dinner. 
And we both noticed that. We said, you know what? That was really, really good. And we don't, you know how you feel after mm -hmm. eating all this. We didn't feel like that. We had desserts and all kinds of things, but I changed how I made them. We did a lot of homework. We were researching recipes. Surrounded by clutter, tired of the stress it creates, ready to find peace of mind and reduce your anxiety, our comprehensive How to Declutter Your Life course guides you step-by-step -step in how to clear clutter and simplify your life. Each section is three months physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and features manageable to-dos. A bonus month on clearing energetic clutter is also included. Choose either workbook or video course. How to Declutter Your Life is designed to build a strong foundation for releasing clutter and continued personal growth. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. I use coconut a lot for things because coconut's good for you and they have a coconut sugar out there mm -hmm. and it well, works in recipes. So, when, you know, they're great resources besides Google. There's Pinterest. I'm a huge fan of that. And mm -hmm. I started, I got a cookbook called cut the sugar. Well, first I want your bread recipe because I would love to have a, a different bread recipe, <laughs> but I learned, so I made peanut butter cookies with dates and almond flour and a couple other ingredients, my husband loves them. And so you get that craving and you get that sweetness, but you're not sick afterwards. And you don't, exactly. the other thing, then I made homemade Parmesan crisps and we had gotten some oh, those of the are store. Good. Oh my gosh, but what my husband said to me, which I was fascinated by, he said, you know, I can have a couple of yours and be satisfied when the stuff that we got at the store, I wanted to eat the whole bag. There you go, because there was probably some sort of additive to it. So yeah. Yeah, watch out for that Parmesan. <laughs> I know, just oh, read uh, wood chips wood pulp. In it. Yeah, wood pulp, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, we, we get the, the hard the hard block, you know, we get it that way. But you know, the you if you look to restructure, you know, you, maybe you have a tradition that you really want to eat, you know, uh, on your holiday or whatever you do. Look for new ways and be creative. This is gonna allow your creative side to to participate and and it's kind of like having your cake and eat it too, because you're just learning how to restructure it with a healthy ingredient. Because buying it already packaged and pre-made, most of the time it's gonna have something added to it. I mean, we read every label. I mean, we are the slowest grocery shoppers because we're going through there, we're reading every label, but we, we usually shop together and we are on every single label, no kidding. And we have a couple of places we go to because we can get some things here and some things there. But we're, we love our lifestyle now. We love how we feel. And we love that we can, I mean, he, my husband's a foodie and he says it better than anything. He says, I can eat whatever I want. I had no idea I could eat what, I mean, he does. He eats all kinds of stuff and he's lost about 40 pounds. Wow. Just changing how he eats, getting all of the the pesticides out. But he also went off all of the pharmaceuticals, every one of them. That was causing some of the problems. And everything's, yeah. So basically now, and when he went back to the doctor on one of his visits last year, the doctor was saying, okay, tell me everything you just did. Because they can't, all of his tests are coming back like there's, he's fine. So he completely healed himself with food. I am a firm believer of that. I read there was a lady, Chris Carr, I think was her name, who talked about her cancer journey and changed mm -hmm. her diet. And I think I would love to see our society go from seeing food as medicine and preventative instead of, okay, I've had a heart attack. What do I do now? Right. Well, I think that it's a generation i think we've gone a few generations now um humanity as a whole we're, we're learning how to be responsible for ourselves instead of okay tell me what to do mm -hmm. if you've never <laughs> needed to be responsible for things like healthcare, you're learning and there's a lot to learn but you can do it and so i say go out there and listen to what well, listen to what your body's saying about this. Listen to 
what's nagging or pulling and, and what you want to do for an intuitive hit it's consistent it's not the message doesn't change it doesn't it's not all over the place it'll be consistent you know consistent like your chips for two weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> that's no, a that consistent message now can you share with us three takeaways you'd like everyone to have from today's podcast three if you summarize most important things you'd like to that everyone to to know okay um well i would say your body is always trying to communicate with you um your soul your spirit of who you really are will use your body will use the emotions your experiences to communicate with you number one i want you to know that and number two is you know when don't you know when you feel down low that's lower frequency the first thing to do to start picking it back up is do something that loves you back love do something that is a gentle thing for yourself and then pay attention to what it's telling you take notes it could be the emotion and then that triggers the eating it could be the other way around you know it could be uh, there, you know, if you feel like it's all these different things, you know, if you have to make lists or pay attention to it and then just go look and do your homework on the nutrition in it. Um, what, what is, you know, why would it tell me to eat this, you know, and then, you know, when you see if it's nutritious or not, I mean, some are obvious like sugar as zero, anything in that, you know, that that's a toxic energy that you need to work on. And then look at whether it's a belief. Are you being stubborn? Are you holding your, digging your heels into a belief that's not supporting you anymore? That would be mental. Or is it an emotion? And so that's what I would say. Those three things, like just kind of get organized. And there you'll find a lot of productivity going in a very positive direction for your life. Uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe as we work on the outer, it affects the inner and vice versa. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> the clutter is inside and outside. Yes, exactly. So Jen, tell us how people can find out more information. If you have any classes, books, whatever you'd like to share, let people know. Okay. Um, we are just starting up quite a few workshops this year. Anyway, um, I'm doing live workshops online and we're also doing some on demand so those are in the the making right now I, there is one that's out there that's a very intensive one for working on your intuition called the eighth chakra um and it's about it takes a good four weeks to go through that one it's all on demand and that's right at my website we just did one tuesday night that was on soul healthy relationships and that's a free class and you it's recorded now but you can go and see it you'll see those right on the front page my my weekly uh radio show is every thursday at 11 a.m eastern and we go into all kinds of topics with this and um i i do a lot with the energies that are coming up month to month so like today we did what's getting ready you know with the energies and how we work through march mm -hmm. and that's been really great for listeners because uh we're going through big changes this year so we're taking that okay here's the energy this is how we can work through it in the best way so um i have free guided meditations at my website and that's jenroyster.com j-e-n-n-r-o-y-s-t-e-r.com i offer private sessions by skype or phone um i speak to groups so if you have a group you know we can do that we can either do that online or if you're somewhere i can get to we can do it that way so i have a few a little bit of everything that i do but i'm all about helping people feel empowered and trusting their intuition and the energy and to really feel like they're soaring and making the most out of their life i love that what a different world we'd live in if we all listened <laughs> to our inner guidance no <laughs> big statement Julie, that's a big statement because it's true. If we could just trust, that's the one you can trust the most. And, and most of us don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I say, let's change that up. I agree with you. 100%. <laughs> we're going to have to have you on for another interview because we're about 5,000 topics we could do, but it's always a pleasure. 
Oh, and it's always a pleasure to hang out with you too. And, and a big hello to all of your viewers. It's great to be with you again. And, and I wish you all the best with your show. And I always have a great time over here. Well, thank you. All right, everyone. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to clear clutter and share your gifts with the world? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, so what step will you take today? Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter. Julie Caraccio provides coaching, professional organizing and speaking, organizing classes, positive affirmations, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Subscribe to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m.